Hello all. Today what we're going to do is go over the December 2021 Apoca box. Now this here is almost the end of January and I'm just getting the box now. My box was shipped out when all the other ones were but it goes from the States to Canada. You got duty fees, you got customs and so on and so forth and it usually takes a lot longer for me to get a box but this one here was even longer this time could be due to Christmas and such but it was longer so I was asked by or a comment was made that a viewer of mine could not subscribe to a pocket box they live in Canada that is true I have grandfathered in being a subscriber for many years that I am still sent a box even though I'm Canadian but they do not take any new subscribers from Canada and the reason why is because of the duty fees the late shipping and all of that rigmarole as we used to call it that it's just you know probably not worth it so that's why I get a box and that's why people can't from Canada subscribe to the Apocalypse box now. Now this box is rather unique and if you look at the items yeah that's cool that's cool that's cool but if you know the reasoning and the thoughts that go into these it makes it that much more cool in my opinion. Uh, I read this you know and so on and I was like, that is really cool. The thought that goes into these. So reading what they have to say can, it just makes it, like I said, more cool. <laughs> so I'm going to read the Master Meyer box information at the top. This is where I read and thought, wow, this is pretty cool. In 1936, there was a farmer named Hugo Kraft who was plowing an area for the first time ever on the island of Gotland in Sweden. The field he was plowing was a swampy mere a few years earlier and was recently drained. Before it was a swampy mere, it was a lake back in the Viking Age. The area was known as the Master Meyer Mire. While he was plowing, Hugo found a wooden chest. But it wasn't just any chest. It was a chest of Viking origin, origin sorry, that contained over 200 Viking woodworking tools. It was the largest Viking tool find in European history. In this Apoca box, we've re recreated two of the items found in the Master Meyer chest the Master Meyer Forest Knife and the Master Meyer Trivet. So, this here is the knife. And what it says, every Viking woodworker needed a good knife. We've used the illustration of the knife remnant found in the Master Meyer chest to recreate a new version of that knife just for you. This is an exclusive build for Apocabox members only. Whether you're using the Master Meyer Forest Knife to work wood around camp or for daily chores to and fro, the custom bone Kydex sheath will keep it safely by your side. We've custom shaped each knife with New Creek logo. So this is the knife right here. Right there. Now they supply five feet of 550 paracord to wrap your handle. That is the new <laughs> Creek design. There it is. I'm going to show you the illustration that inspired this knife. That's the uh, sheath there. Kydex sheath. Put it in. There you go. So this is the illustration they used to get the idea of this Master Meyer Forest Knife. 
So I gave this knife the old uh, fingernail test to see if it's sharp. It is sharp. Let's see how it carved. I've actually not tried this yet. Wow, that cuts deep. But, you can cut very fine with it as well. That's a pretty sweet knife. Very cool. So it's uh, hovering right around zero Fahrenheit out here. That's why I have my gloves on. It's uh, rather chilly. So next on the list is the Master Meyer Hand Forge Camp Trivet. I'm going to read this before I show you what's in this burlap sack. The Hand Forge Trivet is exactly like the ones used by the Vikings. Scoop hot coals underneath to brew tea bake bread, warm sandwiches, toast bread, cook stews, or even grill steaks. It's the perfect camp kitchen accessory for cooking low and slow. Now, this here was pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to show you the illustration. Right there are those uh, camp trivets. So they have it in a burlap sack just to uh, protect it, other, you know, items. But that is the hand forged trivet. So you'd set this in a bed of coals, put your pot on it, and be able to uh, use this as a stand. If you put your pot directly on coals, it's going to cool off the coals. But you can scrape coals underneath and such and use this as a uh, camp pot stand. So very cool. It's rugged, a little hefty, but they're in a chest with all the other uh, items and such. Heft wasn't an issue. They probably had it on a wagon or something, who knows. But a chest full of stuff like this would have been hefty. With that being said, it's a lot easier to work with my bare hands. I'll do that until they start to freeze. <laughs> so this here is next on the list. It's a little kooksa that you can use as a scoop. You could actually scoop up soup and use it as a spoon, but you can get coffee, you can get rice and such, you know, to pour into another container and so on. But it's just a little uh, kooksa scoop. So, very cool. Creek also added a Christmas card and it was signed by Creek, Sarah, River, and Lakeland. So very, very cool. You know, a little personal touch, right? Next also is a pocket field guide on the Quincy. So I was excited about this, to read about this. I know how to make Quincy's and such, but you can never have enough information because there may be a tip or trick that you may find to make things easier for you. So you can always learn and I can't wait to read this book. Now this one here, what it says is this step-by-step -step tutorial is written by survival instructor Aaron Hutchings who hails from Colorado, rugged, rocky mountains. So, Aaron Hutchings wrote this, and uh, like I said, can't wait to read it. Next is just something for fun. This is a hacky sack, an apocalypse box hacky sack. Now, if you're good with hacky sack, it's great. Me, not so much. So, I could just throw it up in the air and catch it. You know, I could play catch with somebody else with it. There's many things you can still do with this, even if you don't know how to play hacky sack, which I don't. This body don't move that way anymore. Next is the Imperial Shrade Rescue Knife. Now, this one here is a lock blade, but you can see it has a shredded teeth, but they're rounded. So you can put this in underneath cut a seat belt. I'm sure it would cut cordage very well, but it's designed to cut belts and such 
if you're trapped in a car and so on, if you carry this on your side or very close by, you can get out of a bad situation. So this here, just good to have, you know, in a vehicle where you can reach it quickly. But I would say that it would definitely cut cordage rather well. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but it should. With that being said, I've got to try it, right? Yep, it does. <laughs> now this here is very cool. It's a tiny first aid guide. Now, when I open this up, you can keep it in this little uh, pouch here. It's going to help keep it waterproof and such. But what I really like about it, they gave you a Fresno lens. That's so you can read it, but you can use this for fire starting as well. The, usually they have to be five power or more. I have one just like this. I've started many fires with it. I have not tried this one. I can't say it will, but, oh man, now I gotta see if I can get a coal. <laughs> I'll do that in a second. Right now, I just want to open this up and show you <laughs> what this is. It's uh, pretty cool that they can fold up like that there and uh, can be very handy. I have, uh, I'm first aid certified, but when you're stressed out and such, you know, a guide can really help and uh, because you may not be thinking clearly. This here may trigger something and be like, oh yeah, that's what I've got to do. Next is this here. This is a soapstone marker. So this here will mark on many, many items and such. You can mark on wood with it. You can mark on many types of uh, different materials. So you can write messages. You can just use a lot with a marker out here, especially if you're trying to uh, do a project and you want a certain length, you can mark it and such. But we'll try this on a little piece of uh, wood right now and see how it works. So say I wanted to cut this off. I can put a line right across like that. And you can see it makes a nice white line. Now I've been very excited about this. This is natural walnut husk die kit. Now the sun is not going to cooperate so I can't test out that magnifier but I will I'm sure sometime. But just to have that with the little pocket guide is very cool because my old eyes wouldn't see it unless I had something like that. But in this kit, it has black walnut husks in here, and it has a piece of 100% cotton cloth. Now, this also gives instructions on how to dye this cloth using natural dye. Now, they call this a flour sack towel, but it's rather big so you many many uses for something like this here but it will be fun to actually dye it with natural material I have not done this before so I'm sure that I'll be posting pictures on my Facebook and the Apocabox Facebook page of uh, how this turns out so that is the Apocabox this month and dyeing the uh, this cotton cloth is the Apocabox Challenge. I want to thank you for watching. Take care and uh, happy 2022.